The last week has been completely amazing. It's I think my dream is finally getting to what I thought it was going to get to. Um, I moved a lot with Carl and um, I really got to know him and I really got a lot of um, confidence in taking up the an anchor, uh, setting the sails, putting down the anchor, you know, and maneuvering with the boat. So um, now when I when I think about leaving, it's not that I get a big heart rush and, and think, oh my god, oh my god, maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna do it tomorrow or the day after. But it's it feels uh, much more comfortable now. So that's that's really good. It's been a really good week. Um, when I was in Coco Bandero, I, I called uh, some friends from Puerto Lindo who uh, work in um, in the Samblas with their catamarans, Cecil and Javier. And um, they were just in Nagana, which is only about five miles from, from Coco Bandero. So I sailed over there and I met them. And it was really nice because they have been living in the area for quite some while, so they know a couple of people. They took me to the island of uh, Corazon and uh, Nagana, which is um, two islands that are connected with a bridge and there's quite a lot of uh, people living there. And they just showed me around, showed me the places where you can get vegetables or bread uh, and we had some nice chicken together. From Nagana I had a nice sail to Green Island, which has a kind of tricky reefy entrance, I think like probably most islands on San Blas. But I made it safely into the anchorage and uh, I looked around and I was wondering, okay, did I miss like the international laundry day or something because all the boats had the laundry hanging outside? But next day I figured out why this was the case. There's actually a little... Um, a little pond on Green Island with um, fresh water so everyone comes there to fill up their tanks because it's quite an issue on the San Blas Islands to find um, fresh water. Well guess what next day all my clothes were spread out on Carl to dry in the sun because I was actually quite in some need of, uh, of some clean clothes as well. Um, in Green Island I, I met James who's uh, also a solo sailor and um, he was planning to go to an island which is which they call Disney Dupe. I don't know what the real name actually of it is, but it's uh, said to be a very beautiful island. And he was planning to meet some friends there, so I just decided to go along with him. And um, we left in the morning. Um, and. Um, he left before me so I could uh, follow him, but in the end actually, where, as soon as I took out my Genoa, Carl was just like overtaking him and uh, that felt really good. I think it's the first time that I've overtaken anyone with Carl because usually I'm the one being overtaken by other boats, so that was, that was great.
before leaving Brina, we bought two lobsters and uh, when we got to Disney Dube, uh, we got to the island and uh, there's a couple of friends from, from James and they had already prepared a huge barbecue with lots of lobsters and crabs and um, they made a really, really tasty, I think they call it veggie bum, but it's like a pumpkin and it's stuffed with uh, potatoes and onions and then you just put it into aluminium foil and then you just leave it in the, in the fire and it was so, so tasty. And um, they had put up some hammocks and we're, you know, having a couple of drinks and chatting and it got night and we had the fire and it was just, there's no one on this island, it was completely just us and the, the moon and the, the food and the fire and it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty nice evening. Uh, from Disney Dube we went with uh, three boats to um, the Lemon Case, but the Western Lemon Case and there's an island called Elefante and there's a little bar and uh, apparently there's some Wi-Fi um, and cold beers, which is always important too. Um, and again, Carl was the fastest one. Elefante is very close to Porvenir and that's where the migration is and where the um, uh, maritime authorities sit. And I hadn't checked into San Blas yet so I had to go and do my paperwork. So I went with the girls from Joanna because they actually have a very fast dinghy. Not like my little rowing one but with a real engine. <laughs> and also because uh, Maria and Kathy they needed someone to help them translate from Spanish to English. And I think we spent like half a day in the office talking to like five different people with five different opinions how to deal with this situation. Um, it was pretty interesting uh, to see all this um, bureaucracy discussions going on. But in the end, uh, we found a solution and it uh, looks like everything is settled now. But I'm running out of visa time, so I need to leave Panama pretty soon. Stayed a couple of days uh, in Elefante and just enjoying life and just relaxing really. We played some volleyball with the Kunas and they're really good at, at volleyball actually. Actually they kicked our asses I think. But uh, it was a lot of fun and um, there were some, some dinners on boats. The girls invited me over to Joanna and I actually had a, a big pulpo dinner on Carl. Just a, just a girls night. We were four girls and uh, it was really nice. I think Carl was enjoying that night a lot, having like four chicas on the boat and a lot of pulpo. I think he was, uh, he was really in his element. The last move um, that I did this week was uh, going back to, to Nagana because uh, I needed a bit of vegetables and some water. Marie and me took a little dinghy trip up the river that runs close to Nagana. Well, actually, we had like a little spa days. I mean, girls living on boats, they know what it's like if you always have like very limited sweet water supply. I mean, I don't even have an indoor shower. So it was just beautiful 
to have uh, all this sweet uh, all this sweet water and you could you know wash your hair put some products in shave your legs without worrying to running the tanks or the water uh, jerry cans low so that was a very nice day as i said it was a it was a beautiful week um, there's lots of things happening and um, nothing you know nothing really went wrong obviously there is a a couple of small learnings for me, which I guess is uh, completely normal. For example, I, once I forgot to take the dinghy close when I was um, putting into reverse to 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 um, to move the anchor into the sand. Well, and I got the I got the line of the dinghy into the prop, and um, you know I was in the front putting down the anchor, and it goes like, and I'm like, what the, you know, what the heck is going on? And I had to go back and put it in neutral. Nothing major happened. I lost the anode of my of my shaft, I have to uh, replace that, but uh, apart from that, everything is good. And then, uh, one time when I when I left the anchorage in uh, in Elephant, I, I I pulled up the main, and uh, well, when I was just taking up the anchor, uh, the sheet must have gotten caught somewhere, so the <laughs> the the wind got into the into the mainsail, and I I just noticed the boat moving going to the side and I was anchored uh, close to another boat that was on a mooring and I was uh, you know I was pretty close to the boat I, I was lucky I was fast and then went batting it back into the cockpit and and put the engine in gear and then kind of went around maybe I did a small power jive as well but uh, you know at least I didn't hit the boat of, of this guy but I can tell you when I was leaving Elefanta my heart was beating quite a lot and it took some time to to get the level of adrenaline down again. But apart from that I think nothing nothing happened and it was just uh, a lot of joy and uh, and uh, small little adventures. I guess uh, uh, in a day or two it's time to, to leave and crawl down towards the border of Colombia. But more about that next week. <laughs>